Okay, let's talk about the Pythagorean Theorem. And uh, this is going to be a basic introduction to the Pythagorean Theorem. And here it is right here. It's a squared plus b squared equals c squared. And uh, this theorem is just absolutely probably one of the most, well, it's just one of the most important uh, well-known theorems that are in mathematics. It's just critical, okay? And it's used uh, everywhere. You see this thing show up. And it's uh, named after a famous mathematician, Pythagoras. And uh, we're going to get into uh, the theorem and its applications. But this is going to be kind of a basic level. Uh, so if you're not familiar with it, and okay, you're just learning about it, then you're going to have a really good uh, understanding to it. Of course, I can make the problems more complicated. But the, again, you know, you're going to see this theorem as you continue to study mathematics. It's going to come up over and over again. And you'll be able to you know, learn the more advanced, uh, I don't say more advanced, but just more a little more sophisticated problems that has to do with Pythagorean uh, uh, theorem type of uh, problems that we solve. But what we're going to get you to do here in this video is understand the uh, basics. So we're going to get to all that and a little more in just one second. But first, let me go ahead and introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tabla Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. And over many, many years, I've poured my heart and soul into believing uh, that I've created one of the best uh, math out programs there is. I love teaching math, and I it just, you know, I really get, you know, a uh, huge amount of satisfaction to seeing people who struggle with math learn math. Okay, so I can help. You know, that's what I do. That's what I'm, you know, there's a lot of things I'm not good at, but I'm, uh, I like to believe I'm pretty good at teaching math. been doing it for a long, long, long time. So I've developed uh, a math help learning program. It's uh, full courses, uh, test prep courses, just a huge amount of instruction. And I've uh, been very, very uh, successful with it in terms of people using it and being uh, themselves successful. So if you're struggling in math or you need to take a full math course, I'm going to leave a link to my math help program in the description of this video. But before we get going, I just want to emphasize the importance of note-taking, okay? I, I just really emphasize this every time I can speak to a math student, is the most critical thing you can be doing to help yourself learn math is taking great notes, okay? The kind of the rule of thumb that I've seen over many, you know, years of teaching math is those students that have great math notes typically have great math grades, and the reverse is true. Those students who take poor notes, or no notes, disorganized notes, my dog ate my homework and my notes, those type of notes, <laughs> that kind of situation, guess what? You, you are probably not doing well in math, okay? You need something to be studying from, all right? So if you're not taking good notes, don't panic. Start immediately correcting that. Start working towards taking better notes. It is a skill, so just start developing that habit. But in the meantime, you need something to study from. So I actually offer uh, very comprehensive detailed notes. I'm going to leave a link to those in the description of this video. Those would include pre-algebra, algebra 1, geometry, and algebra 2, and trigonometry. All right, so let's get into the Pythagorean theorem. And uh, right off the bat, okay, this theorem, all right, helps us uh, solve problems that, uh, that deal with triangles, okay? But not any old uh, triangle, specifically right triangles, okay? So this is what this is about. The Pythagorean theorem helps us solve, um, find out, determine the, the lengths of the sides of a right triangle. That's what this whole thing's about. And a right triangle is this, it's basically, you know, I kind of drew, drew one out here. It's a, a corner, a nice square corner. It's 90 degrees, okay? So we're not talking about triangles that... Are, or, or oblique or like acute, okay? We have other things in uh, trigonometry that help us solve those problems. That's a little more sophisticated, but um, the, they're actually kind of based upon the Pythagorean theorem themselves. So the actual theorem is this. And without further ado, let's go ahead and get into uh, solving a few problems using the Pythagorean theorem. All right, so here is a triangle, okay? Now, I already know the, this is a right triangle, all right? And I know the sides are 3, 4, and 5, okay? I don't know the angle, and it's not relevant to know the angle in a uh, triangle problem that, that deals with the Pythagorean theorem. So you don't need to know the angle. However, uh, if you do have the angle, okay, of a triangle, you can kind of combine that with some basic trigonometry, can I have a couple videos 
on that, actually more than a couple videos. So you can use basic trigonometry, uh, which deals with things like this. You've probably seen this on your calculator, sine, cosine, tangent. All of this stuff has to deal with angles inside of a triangle. So if I know this angle, well, this, these things here, these trigonometric ratios or functions can help me determine an angle. They can also help me determine the sides of a triangle. But with the Pythagorean theorem, okay, we don't really need all this, okay, because it's not relevant. But once you understand basic trigonometry, you can actually even know that much more about right triangles, okay? So the first thing is, when you're using the Pythagorean theorem, let's go ahead and just write it up here, a squared plus b squared equals c squared is, one, is it going to apply in the problem that you're looking at? Okay, again, we're only talking about right triangles, right? So the first thing is, if you're given a triangle problem, you got to look in the corner. Hey, do you see this little symbol? Or does it say 90 degrees? If it doesn't, you can't assume that it's a right triangle. All right, so that's the first kind of um, uh, prerequisite to be able to use the Pythagorean theorem. Now, uh, I'm going to show you the relationship here in a second with all this stuff. But now we need to understand what this means. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Well, A, B, and C, all right, we got these variables in A, B, and C. All these are, are the, the lengths, okay, of the sides of this particular right triangle. Now, here, let's draw another triangle real quick. Yeah, I'll just draw like so. Okay, so we have our a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Now, what we're going to do is assign uh, a, a variable to the sides of this right triangle. The one thing that you need to know, okay, we have this as c, we have this as a b, and then we have this as an a. Of course, we square them for the theorem, is the c is always the longest side of a right triangle, okay? The longest side of a right triangle, and it has a fancy name to it. It's called a hypotenuse, a hypotenuse, okay? So this is the hypotenuse. You might say, well, why don't they just call that an h? Well, I don't make the rules, okay? We <laughs> you, we just call it a c, okay? So a squared plus uh, b squared equals c squared. So the c is always the longest side. And these other two sides can be, this could be a, this could be b, Okay, or it could be the other way around. This could be A, or this could be B. So it doesn't make a difference. These are the two shorter sides. This is always the longest side or the hypotenuse. And that's always going to be the side opposite of the right uh, angle. Okay, so as long as you understand that, then we can kind of see how this uh, Pythagorean theorem works. All right, so let's go ahead and now get into this particular uh, problem. Now, Let's just first verify this relationship. So we're saying the two shorter sides, if we square them, is going to be equal to the square of the hypotenuse. All right, so let's go ahead and do that. Let's call this um, 4a. Okay, so we'll, let's say this side here, we'll square it. 4 plus the square of the other smaller side. That would be 3 squared. Now, is that going to be equal to the square of the hypotenuse? Well, let's check that real quick. Okay. So this relationship is the Pythagorean theorem, okay? So if this holds true, what we're saying is that, in fact, this is a right triangle. So let's go ahead and do the math. 4 squared is 16. 16 plus 3 squared, 3 squared is 9. Is that equal to 5 squared, which is 25? 16 plus 9 is, in fact, 25. So 25 equals to 25. And if you have that situation, what we're saying is, in fact, yes, uh, these are the uh, lengths of a right triangle, okay? So if you don't end up with your a squared plus b squared, okay, being equal to c squared, if, they didn't, if the left isn't equal to the right when you do this math, then the lengths that you were uh, plugging into didn't come from a right triangle. They might've came from a triangle like this or like this, okay? So let's go ahead and uh, do a problem from uh, what would be kind of a standard problem. Now, here we already know all the lengths of a right triangle. But let's say I didn't know the lengths, and let's say, let's get rid of one of these. Now, of course, we know that it's just 3, 4, or 5, but let's erase one of these guys here for a second, and uh, let's solve for x. So let's say we come across a problem like this, right? We're like, uh, solve for x, the length of 
this side of a triangle. Now that's the first thing you're gonna be like, oh, it's a right triangle. Hmm, now I can use a the Pythagorean theorem because it's a right triangle. So let's go ahead and plug things in. So remember, uh, four and three, uh, they could be A or B, doesn't make a difference, but we're solving for uh, C squared, okay? Which in this case is gonna be X. So we can do it like this. So this would be three squared plus four squared, right? Or four squared plus three squared, doesn't make a difference, is equal to X squared, okay? You could write C squared, but the variable is X, so let's just write it like so, right? So uh, nine, or sorry, three squared is nine, plus four squared is 16, and that's equal to x squared. So nine plus 16 is 25, so 25 is equal to x squared. Let's write it this way. We'll put the x squared on the left-hand side is equal to 25. Doesn't make a difference. Left is equal to the right, right is equal to left, so I'm gonna write it this way. So I'm left with this equation, x squared is equal to 25. How do I solve for x? Well, I have to take the square root of both sides. So x is going to be equal to 5. Technically, a positive or negative 5, but we're dealing with the length of a, of a uh, triangle. So there you go. x is equal to 5, and that's what we already knew from the beginning, right? We already knew that this was 5. But we just kind of made, made pretend there that we were solving for it, okay? So that's an application of the Pythagorean theorem. But let's go ahead and do another problem, okay? If you understand this, let's do this. Uh, we're going to use the same information here, okay? And let's solve for another side. All right, so we already know that this is five, this is three, so let's say we're solving for this unknown. Okay, now we know that this is four. Okay, we've been doing this problem, same triangle, but let's suppose we didn't know that this was four. Okay, so now you have come across a uh, triangle problem and we're solving for one of the lengths of the sides that is not the hypotenuse. Okay, so you're saying to yourself, okay, I could do this. Uh, first of all, is it a right triangle? Yep, it's a right triangle, so I can use a Pythagorean theorem. So let's go and plug in our information. Now this time, I can call this A or call this B. It doesn't make a difference, but let's call this side the A side. Okay, so this would be X squared plus three squared. Okay, remember I'm just squaring the sides here and I'm adding them up is equal to c squared, and this is c, that's five squared. All right, so now I'm just gonna go ahead and do the basic algebra uh, to solve this equation. That's x squared plus nine is equal to 25. All right, so how do I solve for x? Well, I gotta subtract nine from both sides of the equation. I gotta get x squared by itself. So I get x squared is equal to uh, 25 minus nine, which is 16. Okay, so just like the Last example, to solve for x, I just go ahead and divide both sides of the equation, or take the square root of both uh, sides, and that would be x is equal to 4. And that's what we already knew um, was here, okay? So this is kind of the two main type of problems you're going to encounter. You're either going to be solving for the hypotenuse, which I showed you the, in the previous example, or you're going to be solving for one of these sides, and I just showed you there. Now, this particular... Uh, triangle, this three, four, five, three, four, five, we know belongs to a right triangle, okay? Because we kind of proved that in the beginning because three squared plus four squared is equal to five squared, okay? Now, uh, because that relationship is true, okay? It follows the Pythagorean theorem. We know that this is, th 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 these uh, lengths, three, four, five, are the lengths of a right triangle. Now, Pretty much you're, when you're dealing with these Pythagorean theorem problems, you're not going to always run into nice little neat numbers like three, four, five. The, this particular uh, triple of numbers is called a Pythagorean triple, three, four, five. It's kind of like playing baseball, right? You have like, oh, well, this is three, that's four, this is five. How lovely is that? Well, oftentimes you're not going to be uh, getting these kind of numbers, okay? This is a special case type of right triangle. Uh, we have the lengths, and we call these a Pyth uh, Pythagorean triple, and, and there's uh, other ones that you'll want to get familiar with. But again, I don't want to get too far ahead of myself. So yes, you can, You can. Um, oftentimes you'll be taking the square root of numbers and getting um, decimals, or, or you're just going to be working with square root of other numbers you may have to simplify. But that's, again, I don't want to get too far ahead. Hopefully, you have now, you know, a good grounding of what the Pythagorean theorem is, 
and why we need it, okay, and in, and how it applies to only two right triangles. But this is, oh, I just can't stress the importance of the Pythagorean theorem, okay? Just hugely, hugely important, and it comes up over and over again in even much more advanced mathematics. It's like, man, this, Pythag this Pythagoras just like was like, man, he was... He was smart. He was smart. You know, he's like, hey, listen, I'm going to keep sh having my theorem show up. Basic math, geometry, trigonometry, calculus. Hey, you're, you're just not going to get get away from it. <laughs> so anyways, hopefully now you got a good sense of what it is. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. All right. And uh, here it is. And, you know, if you're studying this, hopefully that's in your notes. And if it isn't, it should be. And um, let's go ahead and wrap it up this way. Uh, one. Okay, if you don't practice this stuff, you're gonna, you know, it's kind of like, hey, you, yeah, you learn something, but you got to practice. Okay, so if you're studying this in your class, make sure you do all your practice problems or your homework, etc. If you're not understanding, you know, I left you some two ways to get uh, two resources, but the other main resource is uh, uh, my YouTube channel. Okay, I have hundreds and hundreds of videos on my channel that can help you out help you out I try to organize them in various playlists so and I'm posting new stuff all the time so hopefully you're, you're uh, a subscriber if you're not if you like my teacher style please consider subscribing and if this video helped you out in some way please consider smashing that like button I would certainly appreciate that but with that being said I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures thank you for your time and have a great day